Welcome everyone. A quiet revolution is taking shape in the world of nuclear power. Scientists and engineers are turning to thorium, an element once overlooked, as the foundation for a new generation of nuclear reactors. These designs promise to be safer, more efficient and nearly immune to meltdown risks. With global energy demands rising and fossil fuels under scrutiny, the push toward thorium reactors is gaining serious momentum. But how close are we to seeing these reactors become part of the everyday power grid? Thorium reactors use thorium-232 as their primary fuel source. Unlike uranium reactors, which require enrichment, thorium is naturally fertile. This means it can absorb a neutron and transmute into uranium-233, a fissile material that can sustain a nuclear chain reaction. The process begins by introducing thorium into a molten salt mixture, which acts as both the fuel carrier and the coolant. This design eliminates the need for high-pressure containment reducing the risk of explosive failure. In most modern thorium designs, the reactor operates using a molten salt fuel cycle. The fuel is not in solid rods, but dissolved in a hot liquid salt mixture. This allows the system to run at normal pressure while achieving extremely high temperatures. The heat from the reactor is transferred directly to a secondary loop, which can drive turbines or heat exchangers to produce electricity. The absence of solid fuel rods also removes many of the structural failures seen in traditional uranium-based reactors. One of the most advanced concepts is the liquid fluoride thorium reactor. In this setup, thorium is mixed with lithium and beryllium fluoride salts and heated to over 600 degrees Celsius. Neutrons from a small starter supply of fissile material, often uranium-235 or plutonium, initiate the reaction. Once the thorium absorbs these neutrons and becomes uranium-233, it maintains the chain reaction independently. The reactor can then continue operating on thorium alone with minimal external input. So, molten salt reactors are inherently safe because of their thermal expansion properties. If the reactor begins to overheat, the salt expands, which reduces the density of the fissile material and naturally slows the reaction. This passive safety mechanism eliminates the need for complex emergency shutdown systems. Additionally, many designs incorporate a freeze plug at the bottom of the core. If power is lost or the system overheats, the plug melts and drains the fuel into a passive cooling tank, stopping the reaction immediately. Unlike uranium reactors, thorium systems produce much less long-lived nuclear waste. Most of the byproducts decay within a few hundred years rather than thousands. Some designs even allow for continuous reprocessing of the fuel while the reactor is operating. This means unwanted fission products can be filtered out while usable material stays in the loop. It creates a cleaner and more sustainable fuel cycle that drastically reduces the need for long-term storage. Another advantage is the low proliferation risk. Uranium-233 can technically be used for weapons, but it is always contaminated with uranium-232. This isotope emits strong gamma radiation that makes handling and weaponization extremely difficult. The radiation also damages electronics and explosives, making it unsuitable for military use. This feature makes thorium reactors a poor choice for any group seeking to repurpose nuclear material for weapons. The compact design of molten salt reactors allows for factory assembly and modular deployment. These systems can be built at off-site locations and shipped to installation points greatly reducing construction time and cost. Each module can operate independently or be linked with others for larger power needs. Maintenance is also simplified due to the liquid fuel, which can be drained and reprocessed without disassembling the core. In addition to power generation, thorium reactors can provide high temperature heat for industrial processes. Applications include hydrogen production, desalination and chemical manufacturing. Their ability to deliver steady and controllable heat makes them attractive to sectors that currently rely on fossil fuels. By integrating into these processes, thorium systems could reduce emissions across entire industries beyond just the electricity sector. Many designs feature continuous online monitoring and autonomous regulation systems. Sensors inside the reactor track temperature, flow rate and neutron activity in real time. Algorithms can adjust flow valves or initiate emergency cooling without human intervention. 
This level of automation increases operational safety and allows fewer personnel to run each site. With remote access capabilities, experts can supervise multiple reactors from a centralized location. The development of thorium reactors depends on several key technologies reaching maturity. These include corrosion-resistant materials for the molten salt environment, precision fuel processing techniques, and scalable heat to power conversion systems. Research facilities and private companies are actively working on prototypes. If these systems can meet regulatory approval and demonstrate cost-effectiveness, widespread deployment could begin within the next decade. As thorium technology gains attention, some researchers believe it could lead to a major shift in global energy policy. Countries without access to traditional uranium resources may find thorium more attractive due to its wider availability. Thorium is more abundant in the Earth's crust than uranium and can be found in many regions that currently rely on energy imports. If thorium reactors become viable, it could reshape international energy dependencies and allow more nations to achieve energy independence. In the long term, thorium reactors may also contribute to the development of off-grid power systems. Their safety features and compact form make them potential candidates for use in isolated regions, island communities, and even in mobile platforms. Some concepts explore the idea of thorium power stations that can be deployed quickly in response to disaster zones or humanitarian crises. These small-scale reactors could provide reliable electricity and clean water in areas far from traditional infrastructure. Speculative designs also imagine the use of thorium reactors in space. Future missions to the Moon or Mars may require a stable power source that can operate for years without resupply. A molten salt thorium reactor could provide continuous power for habitats, laboratories and life support systems in remote environments. The natural safety of the design makes it more suitable for long-duration space applications where maintenance and repair options are quite limited. Another possibility is combining thorium reactors with other advanced technologies. For example, they could work alongside direct air capture systems to remove carbon dioxide from the atmosphere using the heat and electricity they generate. They may also support synthetic fuel production by powering electrolysis and chemical reactors in facilities that produce clean aviation fuel or ammonia for agriculture. These combinations could create integrated systems that address multiple global challenges at once. Ultimately, thorium reactors represent more than just a technical upgrade. They are a new approach to nuclear thinking that emphasizes safety, efficiency and adaptability. Whether they become the dominant power source of the future or remain a specialized technology will depend on economics, regulation and trust. But if their promise holds true, thorium reactors may help usher in a new era of clean and resilient energy across the globe. As we look ahead to the next decade, Thorium reactors stand out as a serious contender for global energy innovation. They offer the potential for clean, steady power without many of the dangers and political entanglements tied to older nuclear systems. If the current wave of development continues, we may see the first large-scale thorium plants operating before the year 2035. Whether or not they become the cornerstone of future energy depends on political will, economic scaling and continued scientific success. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe.